All right, we are turning to a completely different story here, an act of solidarity. Israeli activists are working to raise money to pay for the treatment of a Palestinian man who was left paralyzed after being shot in the neck earlier this year by an IDF soldier during a skirmish. 24-year-old Harun Abu Aram has been paralyzed from the neck down since he was shot in January and after he was hospitalized for months in Hebron, a group of Israelis raised tens of thousands of shekels to have him move to a rehab center in Tel Aviv. He's undergoing therapy there to improve his breathing, but his treatment costs around $30,000 a month, which is why the Israelis are looking to raise more funds. For now, neither Israel or the Palestinian Authority will fund his medical care and his family can't afford it. Well, we have activist Yair Ron joining us here in the studio. He's a friend of Harun's family. So tell us why the case of Harun Abu Aram stood out to you so much and the activists that have been working with you to fundraise money. Why did your group feel the need to help out? We've met Harun before the incident. We came to visit his family, his uh, village, after a few houses had been uh, demolished there, which is a normal practice in this uh, South, uh, South Hebron area. And uh, we were very touched by this family. It seemed like a very interesting family. Harun itself, himself is a very uh, curious young man, even though he was just a very simple uh, uh, herdsman. Never, gets, uh, never got farther than uh, Yata, than the local village, but still was very keen to know us, and he didn't harbor any bad feelings toward us as Israelis, even so the army has just demolished his house, including everything around it. And about less than five weeks later, we heard that he was shot in the neck and was in critical condition. Uh, brought in with a critical condition to Al Ahali Hospital in, in Hebron. So immediately we felt so, so moved by it because we, we knew the family, we visited with them a few times already. And uh, we knew his little sisters, and, and uh, we helped his little sister with a uh, laptop, and we already got to know the family before the incident. So we realized we must help right. them. Why aren't we seeing the Palestinian Authority or the Israeli government offer to pay for his treatment? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not a spokesman for neither. Uh, Israel doesn't want, I, I think, doesn't want to set a precedent because they, they shoot quite a few people in the, in the West Bank, so they don't want to pay compensation or to acknowledge the responsibility for it, even though they did admit it was a mistake. It was, uh, Harun didn't pose any threats to the soldiers. They were trying to confiscate a, a generator. Wait, this, is during, this is during clashes. Yeah, not, no, no, not clashes at all. It was a very peaceful day. There is a video of it. Uh, some soldiers are coming to a neighbor of Harun to search the premises on some accused. They, found it, they find the generator and they want to take it, to confiscate it. Why? They don't tell. Nobody knows. I mean, it's not a crime to have a generator. Mm -hmm. uh, the solar panels that provide electricity were smashed just a month ago before that. So they don't have electricity. And there is a sort of a skirmish starting. Right. Well, what I, what I want to ask you is how your fundraising has made an impact on Harun and his family. His family looks to us, you know, uh, we, we are the saviors because they were left alone. They, were, they are very poor people. They live in a cave. I mean, they build a small house to, to, to have like a better standard of living, but now they're back in the cave. And they, they speak only Arabic. They never, I mean, the father has mm -hmm. been in Israel, but we are the, more or less their only hope. You know, I think the, the biggest question that I have for you um, is what you think needs to be done to bring back more hope that peace is possible between Israelis and Palestinians because when you see cases like this, you know, it feels like the hatred is just too deep. We're seeing people who are dying on both sides. Um, there's a lot of pain and it makes you feel hopeless. So through this experience of, of fundraising money for the family, do you think that coming together and meeting these people has perhaps changed some of the sentiments here? I Sorry, but, but you got it wrong, because it's not the fundraising that brings people together. It's right. the, the fact that we got 
together, that we got to know this family. Right. Through that, we got to the fundraising. The fundraising is something we have to do. You know, we, we do it all the time. We've, we say not, not on such a scale, but we help with scholarships, with uh, some medical aid. So, But the thing is to get to know the people and to meet the people and to go there. It's not so far. It's like mm -hmm. half an hour from Be'er Sheba or from Arad, and the people are so happy to to see you and to see there are other Israelis and not all Israelis are settlers that are trying to take over the land and, and harass them on, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So this is the way to provide some, some hope because once they know us, even without us raising the money, I mean of course raising the money is a miracle. Right. I still don't believe we managed to do it.